Like I mentioned on Twitter, iStation sent me this LCD, which can be used with Arduino or other microcontroller. It's one of these smaller ones, 1.8 inches, which is good for portable devices. On the back of the PCB there's microSD card slot, which has its own SPI interface. I will concentrate on the display itself. The built-in driver chip is ST7735, so you can use Arduino's TFT library. The resolution is 128x160, so it's good enough for a small amount of text. And the interface is actually SPI instead of I2C. People get confused about which interface these have because of the pin names. The pin names are actually visible on the back of the PCB, and there you can see there's SCL and SDA, which are names usually used for I2C, but they are clock and data for the SPI in this case. And like I said, there's own SPI interface for SD card, but you can connect the clock and mousey pins to the display pins, so you can use both in same SPI bus. One thing I don't like about these pins is that they come above the surface of the display. In my opinion, it would be better if they were on the other side of the PCB, so they won't be pointing forward, but backwards instead. This won't matter too much while prototyping on a breadboard, but if you want to mount this on a case, you can just cut a square hole and mount this display behind that hole if you want to avoid the different angle of the display compared to the case. But that's easily fixed by desoldering the pins or using spacer around the display. But now let's try this display with Arduino. And before I show the test, I have to mention that the Arduino is 3.3 volt version I've replaced a 5V regulator with 3.3V equivalent, made a cut on the trace, right there next to the corner pin, and then I have connected the wire from cathode of the diode to the input of the regulator, so when I connect the USB cable to this Arduino, the 5V coming from the computer will get regulated by this 3.3V regulator. 3.3 volt power supply with 16 MHz crystal is out of spec for 80 mega 328 but it has worked for me. Now back to the test. The viewing angles are pretty good for this display. The classical inversion of colors is not happening with this display. You can read the text from any angle, at least in my opinion, especially when using black background and using font colors that are pretty liked. This 5x7 pixel font is quite readable and you can get 20 lines and 12 columns with this font, so pretty nice amount of information on such small display. As a conclusion, pretty cheap and easy to use display. Another product was this MP3 module which has microSD card slot. Here's the picture for connections, it's other revision but the connections are the same. There are three pairs of pads where you can solder buttons or wires for them and the actions are mentioned here, previous, play, and next. So here are the pads, and when you sort those pairs, they will connect one of these three resistors to ground. And the action depends on the value of the resistor. Here are a list of all the resistors that can be used, and here are three resistors that are on board, giving you the functions of previous, slash volume minus, play pause, and next slash wall plus. There are a few other functions you could get by connecting some other resistance values, but there's no individual volume patterns. That's something I don't like, but more on that a little bit later on this video. Making a mp3 player with this module is pretty easy. You just need a speaker, which I have here. Then you need three buttons. These connectors are for the speaker, and here I'm connecting the power supply. You can hear a little pop from the speaker when you power on, and the music starts playing automatically. There are two buttons for chasing the track that is playing. And of course these salvage buttons that I've been using for prototyping doesn't work properly. There we go. The track has changed. Pressing it again, there's a third track, and another button will change the tracks on other direction. Long pressing the buttons that change the track will change the volume of the music. And one button is for play slash pause. When the module is powered on and you plug in the macro SD card, the music will start playing automatically. So 
So very simple mp3 player module which you can use for for example background music on the garage or hallway or other place where you might not be controlling it all the time. Just using play pause button for starting or stopping the music and maybe using buttons to adjust the volume and skipping annoying tracks. If you are going to change the resistors you might try adding 1k resistor between IOA 0 and 3.3 volts. That way you can get these extra functions or not extra these will replace the other functions. But there are individual volume buttons and previous and next buttons so these will be ideal for some place where you have music playing all the time and you just want to change the volume from time to time. I haven't tried these functions so do you the modifications at your own risk.